Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso, and we need to investigate because is wind indeed the future? Now, the Western Cape's goal is to decrease reliance on traditional energy sources like ESCOM, and the recent donation of energy equipment from China seems to have helped a bit as well. We're joined in studio by journalist Antoinette Slabbit to discuss wind energy as an alternative energy source and if it can play a big role in providing sustainable and reliable power throughout the country. Antoinette, good morning. Thank you for waking up and using your energy for us today. Good morning. Lovely. So, Antoinette, uh, the Western Cape, obviously a place poised to, to be part of the wind energy generation of the nation, so to speak. Uh, being more reliant on alternative energy sources, especially wind, is it a bold plan? Is it ambitious? Or is it something that has been a past missed opportunity that the Western Cape is now actually taking on? Yes, we know that there's an, a lot of wind in the Western Cape, uh, and apparently it's even going to increase as the impact of climate change yes. uh, brings us more storms. Um, but the Western Cape is quite ambitious. It's, it's got a bold plan to, to decrease their reliance on ESCOM by about 6,000 megawatt in the next nine years. Wow. And, and the bulk of that will be wind energy. Now, just to give you an idea, the current total installed wind capacity is about um, 3,400 megawatts. Yes. And they're looking at 6,000, you know, a large portion being wind. Yeah. Um, and then you must also keep in mind that the availability of wind generation is fairly low, around the 30s, um, maybe just above 30% availability. So to get, uh, let's say, 4,000 megawatts, of generation capacity, you have to build a lot more. So it's, it's quite an ambitious plan. So be that as it may, I'm sure that there are ways to help the shortfall because, you know, when it's windy in the Western Cape, it's very windy. And is there not a way that the Western Cape uh, can actually sort of store when there's massive wind um, opportunities and then, of course, use that for later? I mean, are there sort of uh, technologies that can help the shortfall of wind generation in the province? Yes, wind ge generation on its own only works when the wind blows. And we know the wind doesn't always blow. Yeah. So combining it with uh, batteries will enable us to store and use at the later stage, you know, also use yeah. when there's no um, wind blowing. And then there's also the possibility of combining it with solar power. Ah. And the research has shown that if you combine wind and solar, you have fairly um, good coverage over a 24-hour period. And also that can uh, help to utilize the grid more efficiently because uh, one of the big constraints is the availability of grid capacity. So you've got all the wind and you can build many, many, many wind farms. Yeah. But if you don't have a network to connect to and to evacuate that energy to the user, you know, the wind farm is useless. I just need to ask about China's contribution around 167 million rand of infrastructure. Uh, is that going to make a big difference in order to make sure that there are more opportunities to evacuate some of that power into the actual grid? Is that the plan, having that uh, take on from China? Well, uh, I think South Africa can use all the need it, it can get, uh, uh, can, can use all the help it can get. Yeah. And China is very experienced, especially in, in grid um, expansion, in grid management. So that can definitely help us and uh, they can also help us to get the components because you know with a big uh, rush to build alternative energy there's often a shortage in components yeah and uh, with the manufacturing capacity china can definitely assist in that regard so just a last question antoinette you know with africa being the land of the sun, such great rich energy with the sun, with our waterfalls, with the wind. Uh, big question, I know it's quite loaded, but what's taken us so long to look at alternative energies in this particular place? Let's just focus on South Africa. What do you think has been, uh, what has been dragging our feet? Well, we've been spoiled with cheap coal, um, 
producing cheap energy and we've been using it as if there's no shortage. Now we, suddenly we've got a shortage, the uh, tariffs are increasing. Yeah. Now we look at ways to work efficiently and to utilize other sources. But one must also be, be um, careful of thinking that these alternative energies will necessarily save us from load shedding because with ESCOM's rules, the opportunities to use alternative energy to offset load shedding is really quite limited. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, there's a big one over there. Antoinette, thank you so much. It's all the time we have, but it's been great unpacking this alternative energy with you. I hope you have a great morning. And keep up the energy for the rest of the day. We thank you so much for joining us. Lovely. Antoinette Slabbert, a journalist within that particular energy space. And of course, wind energy, is it a viable option? Will it be something that could contribute to the grid? Definitely yes, but in what capacity? That is yet to be seen as we get onto some of the news headlines from around the world. And of course, we are standing by to deliver that. Here's Ralph.